keep it fun. Maybe shit stories. Sounds good. <laughs>
Word. And then uh, obviously sonically, uh, certainly one of the, uh, one of my favorite records you put out, produced by Steve Albini. That had to be a major, major head trip to work with a guy who's a hero. Produced all your favorite bands that I know you've shouted out sure. in the past. Yeah. So what was it like working with Steve? Did you work at his uh, studio, the Electrical Audio Factory? Well, yeah, yeah, it was Electrical Audio in Chicago. And uh, it was real quick. It was like three days. And we knew it was going to be you know, not a lot of time. So we prepared, over-prepared for it multiple rounds of demos we went out on the road just to just to try out the show or the, the songs you know because it's one thing to practice them in your you know either whatever you're in your basement or your practice spot it's another thing to get in front of people and you have to really know your shit you can't be like oh can we start it over again you know and uh so we got super duper prepared with these songs went with him for three days and he's he's on some sort of a what, what do they call that he's on some sort of spectrum and level of a uh efficiency and uh you know i mean you just know for sure it's gonna sound great you know for sure it's gonna be as quick as possible um not so much like when it comes to like when you talk about producers usually that implies like helping creatively mold things he's actually the total opposite of that he's like i don't want to chime in on any of that i just want to be an engineer i just want to re uh, capture what you guys do as well as possible and uh and that's what he did and it was cool and then we uh took it to a, a buddy of ours this guy colin dupuy to mix it he's down in nashville works with like at the black Keys studio he helped build that studio and he does all sorts of music a lot of it's way more on the poppy side than us but uh the thing that uh from his resume that uh, got our attention was he did the latest Tomahawk record, Mike Patton and uh, guys from Jesus Lizard and Battles and all that. And uh, and we're like, man, and we just happened to be buddies with the guy. And so we're like, hey, you know, whatever. So, so weird. Yeah, we got Steve Albini recorded it. We have a Grammy award winning engineer mixed it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're... Uh, I guess it's reality. I don't know. I guess it's heavy stuff for some punks from the streets, man. Right? Yeah, we're just faking it till we make it. But then sometimes little things are like, "Whoa, wow, we did that, or we made that happen somehow." Or really, you know, yeah, it's cool. Well, it's very uh, cool. The proof's in the pudding on this one, man. It's really a tight record, and uh, I know you know. There's bands that go to castles and make records in the in the country for like a year, mm -hmm. you know, like Led Zeppelin records and Pink Floyd, which I love those records. But like, and then there's like Steve Albini come in, have your shit ready, do it in three days. Uh, even if you're not a fan of, you know, I know Steve is famous for producing Nirvana, Smashing yeah. Pumpkins, but he go look up his discogs, go look up the thing, go listen back through the records he's made. He's made some immaculate, immaculate records that were literally all recorded the same way in like three days yeah yeah and that, i think that's the thing it's like most people most like engineers that are like big names have done huge records like in utero or whatever uh they're not really attainable for you know joe schmo regular little bands like our band and steve's different in that way where he wants to be kind of the the blue collar every man's band engineer and uh so yeah you just straight up just hit up the studio and be like we want to record with him like okay like if you seriously if you wanted to go in there and just record yourself farting all day long he would do that and he would make it sound exactly the way it sounds when you fart in the room tight so yeah yeah i mean depending on your uh sphincter and uh uh it might be a loose sound but uh, but uh, that's just like that's the thing with him though is it's it's super cool that he's down to earth in that way and he just wants he wants to like he records big records he'll record records for some band that's putting out a hundred cassettes you know and uh relatively affordable and uh just yeah just, uh, super cool dude He's all about the art, which I love, and yeah. I know you do too. Yeah, same thing. I know there's stories of him, like with the uh, with the Nirvana record, where they were trying to like sell him or like give him like certain points on the record, and that was gonna be part of how his uh, reimbursement or whatever. And he was like, "No, that should go to the artist. Pay me a flat rate, and then I feel that's an ethical, uh, fair arrangement." And so that's that's pretty cool and probably pretty rare. Awesome, man. And then for a little out of the box business for this record, uh, you guys work with one of my all time favorite people, uh, Chewy, uh, which is yes. like I, on paper. I when I first saw the press release about it, I was like, so Voivod made a guest appearance on the Child Bite record, which sounds insane until you hear the track. And then you think about Voivod's whole career of being kind of a complete, uh, you know, confounding anomaly of greatness. Yeah. And what a great track it is. 
Oh, thank Talk you, man. About that process. Oh, yeah, totally, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, the whole way that that came together is because in, I believe, 2016, we did a pretty long tour with those guys. We were running out with them for, I think, about five weeks, and which was a total honor and a total mind fuck just to be able to do that, you know? And, um, and we just hit it off with the guys. They really liked us because we we're oddballs and they're oddballs, you know, and they were watching us every night. And and Chewy would be, you know, come out and he would be talking about certain parts of our songs. Like, you know, other, you know, after we were playing, he would come up with his guitar and he'd be like, well, how to show me that uh, riff. I, I can't do a French Canadian accent, but that's my half fast bullshit version. And, um, and then our, our guitar player would be like, well, it's in this messed up tuning. And he's like, Oh, I'll figure it out. And then he does it. And then he just, he's playing our riffs like immediately. He's, so, I mean, just the fact that we knew that he was legitimately, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, he was legitimately a fan of ours from that. And like, you know, that, like, like Snake would go out on stage. We played some festival up near Montreal. He'd go out on stage in front of 10,000 people wearing a child bite shirt. Before he went up there, he turned to me. He was like, Respect. You know, I was like, uh, I was, all right, man. All right. I mean, that's pretty mind blowing when it's your heroes trying to show you respect and throw you a bone. So it just kind of was always in the back of my head, like, oh, it'd be cool to do something with one of those guys one day. Um, my wife and I used to throw a festival in Detroit. We did it for like five years called Berserker. And one of the years we had a way do the uh, artwork on one of the T-shirts, you know, hired him to do that for a completely fair price. And they're just, so they're just like really cool down to earth guys you know put me on the guest list whenever they're coming through town so yeah we hit him up sent him the song and he uh knocked it out i don't know in a couple days and sent it back and on top of that just to, to speak to the kindness and generosity of voivod he not only did the song sent it to us and it's amazing but he even recorded i mean the, the solo is like i think like maybe 40 seconds long he took the time to record a nine minute long tutorial video so our guitar player could learn how to play it where he goes note by note he was like here's your i really like your song jeremy congratulations here's how you play the solo and then he would go through and slowly showed him exactly every single note so it's beyond just like oh he did a guest thing it's like really we got a, a I'm friends with him, and it's just still doesn't make any sense. Does not compute. No, uh, it no. does sound like the most chewy thing possible, yes. and also, uh, you know, being a huge uh, prog and thrash nerd my whole life, it's kind of funny how Voivod has almost become more punk as they've gotten uh, more veteran and older. It's weird, yeah. like they become a punk band in a way. And it's incredible that they came back with an, a new guitar player, but was basically a student of Peggy. And and their new records are some of their best records, in my opinion. It's like, for it to be a band, I think like 35 years it is, and to hear these new newest records like Target Earth and the, the Post Society EP, and then the newest one, they're all just like, dude, this is unheard of, you know? At best, you'd hope, Oh yeah, they they still kind of got it. And like no, they they're like blowing themselves away. They're exceeding what they've done in the past, and it's uh I don't know, it's very inspirational. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so uh, just further along, the record comes out next week, and uh, you guys never seem to take off much time. I feel like you're on the road all the time, or hometown shows, or busy doing stuff. Yeah. So I imagine you have a full slate for the rest of this year and into 2020, right? You know, we're, we're on this tour right now with Black Tusk. We are going to uh, wrap this up in the next few days. The only other thing we have this year is we're doing a, a record release show back home in Detroit, uh, which we were lucky to, again, another, is uh, we have this band, Easy Action, playing with us, which is, if you don't know, it's basically Negative Approaches rock band so it's all the same dudes in negative approach but it's them doing these like they're like noise rock hard rock songs and i mean just the fact that they're like oh yeah we'll play your show you know it's john brannan it's you know check it out it's pretty damn cool and uh so we're doing that and then uh and then we'll we'll see what comes up for next year man but the idea is to hit the road and just support this record because we're just we're not itching to like start a new one like this we're really happy with this it's still fresh to us so definitely hope to spend most of the year uh playing these songs 
Killer, man. Uh, and we're big negative approach fans, and there's a definite, uh, you know, a through line from you guys, from them to you guys. You could see like the baton pass and things like that, where you guys are kind of carrying that same kind of torch. Uh, we saw a negative approach here, put on one of the most insane fucking shows ever in the history of this venue or any Brooklyn venue, <laughs> uh, and it was unbelievable to see those guys still doing their thing, and the crowd was banana balls. Oh, I bet, I bet. So yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, stoked to talk to you. Uh, super stoked for this record. Comes out next week on Housecore Records. Um, can't thank you enough for spending some some of your pre-show time with us and your uh, Takate time. I appreciate you, man. Uh, I am Keefe from Ghost Cult Mag. Sean from Childbite. We're out. Guilty as charged. See ya.